Our speakers today are going to introduce themselves. So first, let me just say uh, welcome <laughs> from the Feed the Future Innovation Lab for Livestock Systems. My name is Jim Harper, and I want to welcome you to this second webinar in a series of five webinars. Uh, and we'll go over the list of those, but there is one webinar previous to this that is posted on our uh, website. So I encourage you to see that after this second webinar. And this one is about accessing and searching Agora for research literature. And so we're gonna go ahead and move to the next slide and allow our speakers to uh, introduce themselves. But first, let me go ahead and read off this list of topics in the webinar series. So in August, we had the introduction to the Research for Life programs. And today we're talking about Agora and a research literature. In two weeks from today, there'll be a webinar about search strategies for successful literature reviews. So you won't wanna miss that, how to search effectively. Two weeks from then, October 31st, will be how to store your references and your content in the most efficient ways. And then in November, we'll probably reschedule this date, but uh, we'll be having uh, a webinar in November about the ethics and research publications. And please visit our website for more information about this at the livestocklab.ifis.ufl.edu. And now I'd like to introduce or have the people on camera introduce themselves. <laughs> Hello, and thank you for inviting us to this webinar. I'm Michelle Leonard, and I am a science and technology librarian at the University of Florida. Hello, my name is Lenny Ryan. I am a former colleague of Michelle, retired from the university, and I've been working with these research for life projects for almost 12 years, mostly writing training material and doing training. So when you have questions, you email me. Here are the emails. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Uh, in the first in the first webinar, we talked a lot about all five programs and how to register and how to find out if your institution is registered. I think we have three potentially three different groups. We have people who are in. Uh, research for Life eligible countries and their institution may be registered or not. We have people who are at in academic settings who may have projects, linkages, students who are going to these eligible countries and can kind of promote uh, these resources. And then we have students who will be returning to these environments and they're going to say, oh, I can't get to UF's library resources anymore. Michelle's an expert on copyright. And she would say, no way, is this allowed? And then they say, well, how am I going to get current information? And this, these research for life projects, which are about agriculture, environment, health, uh, innovation, and now we have one for uh, legal information, grant access to current journals and eBooks. Okay, so I think we can go on. Uh, here's a very brief overview of the five programs. Anari was the original one. It is up to 13,500 journals, up to 60,000 books and other information resources. We will be looking at Agora today, which has a little less mix, but as you can see, uh, there is a significant amount of information you can potentially reach. And today we'll talk about the pretty much the portal, which only has simple access. And at the end, Michelle will talk a little about a keyword search tool that is built in, and that will come up in the next webinar. We didn't want to make this one 90 minutes. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Then we have the agriculture one. And you can see you can be in one discipline and one information from the mix of journals and books in another one, health and agriculture carry over a lot. Agriculture and agriculture carry over a lot. Uh, Artie is more about development and innovation from the World Intellectual Property Organization. And the last one was recently launched and about it's about law and law related content. And again, this may carry over to other disciplines. 
if you're writing health legislation or you're writing environmental or agriculture rules, it may be useful to see some of the other material. Okay, so very briefly, all registered institutions have to sign an agreement. And what each institution gets is a username and password. Okay, so that you can use the password. So we'll talk briefly about use of programs, passwords, and copyright. Okay, uh, you can share the institution theoretically should share the username and password with colleagues, students, faculties in your institution. They can be given to people who are visiting. So if you are doing your re dissertation research and need to access some journals, you could go to the library at an agriculture institute and say, hey, can I get on Agora? I need to check these journals. Okay, and of course, we're hoping you also show your colleagues that you're working with. Okay, you cannot share it outside the institution. It says, do not use outside the country. And this is a little, we, we got a little better about this one. Okay, if you are in a registered institution in Uganda, say, or in Ethiopia, Ethiopia is in this program, right? Or in Cambodia, and you go to a meeting in London, you're gonna say, ah, I'm here two weeks, I'm visiting this institution. I have a meeting and then I have uh, some other work to do. And now I have much better Wi-Fi and bandwidth. You can, up to a month, use your R4L username and password and do some literature searches. So this is new, okay? And I think it's uh, uh, a real positive option as of July, okay? Now, if you're at the University of Florida for two years doing a program, no good, okay? So copyright and fair use, and Michelle's really an expert on this, but basically there's always, always agreements, right? Between publishers and users and the people that purchase the material, if this is a, a commercial publisher. So what copyright and fair use in this sense are applied to Research for Life as being an institution. You can download or print up to 15% of a journal. You can use material for educational purposes, such as giving all the students a copy or even having them pay for the printing of a copy of an article. So it's a, that's called fair use under educational purposes. And you can make copies for institution members or students or send them the PDF. I, I think that's even more relevant. You could actually, if you're an instructor, set up uh, a flash drive with a series of PDFs on it and students could borrow that from the library. Correct, Michelle? Yeah, okay. So let's say it says be cautious, be sensible. All right, next. Uh, what you can't do is charge money for them, post content on websites or blogs, post your password somewhere, Download articles from a single, single issue. Uh, uh, there have been cases where institutions have been closed down because someone had the password and they were using robotics to download, you know, literally thousands of articles. At that point, the institution has to get a new password, but it, it's fairly routine. Okay, so I think we're done with that. Sorry that these slides are for the, uh, for the, health related program, but what this is saying is you, as of last March, not only can you access this on a laptop, but there is a mobile phone option. Obviously the one on the laptop or desktop looks more horizontal and the one on the right is much more vertical, but it does work. And I've been in workshops where we had trouble with the, router and bandwidth and people use their minutes, their data on their mobile phones until we fixed it. Next, please. Okay, here we are. This is just displaying how it looks. And you can see the journal collection, the book collection is very vertical as opposed to being horizontal when you call it up with a computer screen. Okay, so we'll finish with that and there's more information about this 
in the first webinar, which Jim says, and he can tell you later exactly where it is. Uh, there's a whole issue about how to register, how to check if your institution is registered, how to find the person who has the username and password. Let's say you're a student at UF and you're going back to one of the eligible countries. Please, you can communicate with me and we'll try to find you, find out first if your institution is registered because I have the list for all the countries that are in this program. And then we'll try to contact, give you the names of the contacts so you can go back and get the username and password. So uh, this is just, was covered more extensively in the first webinar, but we wanna go on to content today, okay? All right, so this, that's just a display of the registration page. And if you register for one program, you're registering for all five. So your Agora password will work in all of them, okay? We go on, all individuals can use it. If your institution's registered, as I said, the librarian should have the username and password. If your librarian does not have the log information, login information, and your institution is registered, you can write to the help desk or write to me and I'll help you with it. Okay. Any comments, any chat, any, any questions about this process? As I said, there's much more detail about it in the first webinar. Okay. All right. So here is the URL. And for people who are have your laptop open, if you go to this page and you click on content portal, you'll at least be able to display the content homepage. You won't have a login, password, user ID and password. We have, uh, we will be doing some exercises. If you do have one, go ahead. You may be able to do the exercises to a certain extent without a username and password because all the free slash open access journals will be available. Okay, so, but here we, what you would do from this page is click on login Agora and you'll see this page. This is where for the, for the hands-on here, we have already logged into Agora. So you put in the username and password, click on login, and then you get to the five programs, okay? And as you can see, in this case, we are going to open Agora. Uh, please do. Okay, and now you can see that you are logged in. There are two ways up at the top. It says loginresearchforlife.org and a long screen. And then on the right, it says logged in from test account because I've used uh, a test login, okay? What this does, if you do not log in, and I'll show you this, you only get access to a finite amount of the material. Now, I will say this, and Michelle has examples of this. I think it's in the next, it'll be in the next webinar where we're actually doing keyword searching. Different countries have different mixes. That's because the publishers can choose whether to be grant access in a country or not. Okay, for example, we and this is the example in the summon keyword search. I think Cambodia had twice as many journal articles as Ethiopia because the publishers can choose whether to grant access or not. Okay, for the exercises today, we're using examples that should work uh, with every password. So we have logged in. Okay, if you have not logged in, it tells you log in for access. Somewhere behind my little picture, there we are. Okay, so it gives you a reminder to log in again. And then from there, let me show you what happens. If you do not log in, we have opened up a subject, animal science, and we are not logged in. So you see the gray boxes for the journals that you could get if you're logged in. And only the blue ones are displaying 
because they're from the directory of open access journals. Okay, so they're open access journals. So you can see right here, you're only getting about half the potential journals from, uh, because you didn't log in, okay? Okay, so now very quickly, we're gonna look at three things here. Journal, briefly mention language. Journal collections, subject and publisher. And then Michelle's gonna talk a little bit as a preview for the next webinar about keyword searching. Please understand the next big develop, the last big development for the Research for Life programs was getting a new authentication system, which works significantly better. I won't give you details of the problems because I don't have to teach them anymore how to get around them. The next will be an upgrade of this content homepage to make it much more dynamic. Uh, please note, if you went into Hanari, if you went into Awari, if you went into all the programs, this first page will look the same. And uh, also every one of them has this above the journal collection, it's search inside Agora full text. So this will be displayed for every one of the programs. Shall we go on? Okay, questions, send them in. Uh, once you have opened, I have opened the A of the journal collection list, and you can see there are some tools to help you. One is that you can display more than 25, the initial 25 items on a page. So you could display all the journals that start with A. And also on the right, you can scroll to the next page or to the last. And so there are some basic features for accessing a list, a lengthy list of journals. Here we are in the A of the alphabet. Okay, next. Okay. So we are scrolling down and we decide to open up agroecology and sustainable food systems. Okay. And this is from a publisher called Taylor and Francis. So my password allows me to open this journal and a lot of others. I can see some that it depends what country you're in and what the publishers have decided to do. So we open this up and no note you also have uh, the volume 2013 to the current issue. Many journals go back to the late 1900s and early 2000, 2001, because that's when we had the big migration from print to electronic resources. It dates us a bit, but that's okay. So here we have our list of issues displayed on the initial page. Note that there is a title change. It used to be called uh, Journal of Sustainable Agriculture, and now it's called Agroecology and Sustainable Food Systems. And you can open up the specific journal articles. Click to the next. I think we've opened up the current issue, latest articles, and then you can actually physically open the article. Next slide. I'm sure all of you have done this. Okay, can you go back one? I made a mistake. You can open up the slide and click on the full text article. Okay, that's all we'll do with this. Now we can go on to an exercise. Uh, we've got to split the screens. We're going to try to split the screens so that you can see the exercise on the left. And we have an intern who's going to be the student here. Okay. okay. Kelsey's going to help us. Kelsey's going to help us. All right. So, so this first, is an experiment. It's the first time this has ever happened. Yes, we're trying. So this, we're trying to kind of replicate what your situation will be. Okay. So Kelsey's going to go to, she's on the Agora content page. She's going to go to journal collection A to Z list and click on C. Okay. Because we want the Canadian Journal of Animal Science. Now, what she can do, only 25 are listed, so you could click on that little and list the first 100. That should work. I could be wrong. So we're gonna scroll down to Canadian Journal of, oh, there's a couple there. Canadian Journal of Animal Sciences. There it is. 
And actually, it's from the publisher and also from the a publisher and also uh, I see it, it shifted over at some point. You've got the all you've got all the way back to 1957 with Canadian Journal of Animal Sciences, and then it's also published by Bio One. So you have from volume 91, 2001. So open this up. Yeah, note there are two days. What is the, let's see if it works. We can't tell if it's, ah, there we go. So my question is, what is the date, volume, and issue number of the latest issue? And Kelsey could tell us, but you can see right there. Mm -hmm. Volume 98, number three. Okay, this is very routine to all of you, but I just want to kind of show you how Agora works. Okay, so she's going to open up that last issue. Okay, and let's pick an article. Michelle, you want to pick an article? You're the subject specialist here. Okay, we're not going to ask Kelsey to do that. Okay, scroll down so she can see the articles. The evaluation of sensory. Evaluation of sensory attributes of a model. Okay, so you could click on full text, and from there, there's your abstract, and you scroll down, there's a full text. And you also, 99.9% .9 of times have option to download the free full text. Not the free full text, the PDF. So scroll back to the top. And PDF with links. PDF plus PDF. Okay, which one would you like her to click on? Uh, go ahead and the PDF plus. Okay, so this may be a PDF with links. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think there are links to the bibliography. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Have, if we have a chat, has anyone been able to do something similar? And chat, tell us if this seems to be making sense and working at your end. We don't. It's, it's not like being in a face-to-face -face workshop where you see people's faces. So maybe we spend a minute, see if there's any chat here. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if someone could just confirm that you're seeing everything, we're talking about two different screens on the left. There is uh, the PowerPoint presentation on the right, there's a journal article. Mm -hmm. And we have someone saying, yes, uh, it's working. That might that have been, was that was from before. Yeah. So I want a confirmation that we're still working. And you're seeing two items on the screen. Great, I'm okay. seeing the two screens. And right. then do you want to repeat your question, Lenny? what you were asking for them, if anyone was able to okay. complete. Okay, has anyone uh, followed along online or you're just viewing this? I know it'd be a little complicated because you'd have to have split screens like this or toggle back and forth. Okay, if we don't get any answer, we'll continue. Uh, so the point is, if you're a user or if you're uh, a lecturer or if you're a librarian and you, want others to use this, you can go back and use these screens and show them how and do your own little training. Uh, probably at the end, I, not today, but I can talk about where all this training material is. But this, you could go back and say, okay, let's go through, let's look at a journal by title. Okay. And I think then there are a couple other exercises, parts of the exercise we'll skip. What is the title and author of the full text article you viewed? That's pretty obvious. The title is there. The authors are below it. It's from the Division of Animal and Dairy Science of Chunnan National University in Korea. Okay. And then if you had, we had more time, we would have you look up another journal that might be of interest to you. I think at this point we want to go on because we're doing all right time wise. Yeah. Everyone agree? We will go back to the Okay, so the next thing, which will be very useful, I've been at institutions doing training and the basic scientists did not know they could go into 
Hanari or Agora and look up biology articles or look up food science articles. They weren't aware of the subject access. Okay, so this is a good way for you to get a feel for what material is in your discipline and also to show your colleagues, hey, did you know that we have, you have 58 art, uh, journals for forestry? And they'll go, wait a minute, I didn't know about this, okay? Because I think that some, when, when you and the staff did some uh, site visits, people were asking about, well, we don't have access to the journals, we don't have this, we don't have that. I understand it may be a little complicated getting your institution registered, finding out if you're registered and all that. So that's where my email address comes in. I promise to answer any questions. Okay, so let's look at the subject access. We're gonna to go to food science and nutrition. Okay, you can go to the next slide. Oh, I'm sorry, I made you, I made you go too fast. Okay, next slide. So here you have a list for food, science, and nutrition, 741 journals and also books. In this list, you'll see journals and books. Again, some countries might only have 300. Depends on the publisher granting access. You can see for this one, since I have a global kind of password, we have 307 journals and 434 books on food science and nutrition. So now we go to another exercise, I think. Is that correct? Uh -huh. Let us, okay, we have to go back. We have to go back here or close this. Back, back. Yeah, we'll get back to the home page. There might be an easier way. I think what happened is we have several tabs open. We can't see through it. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Now go to the top and we got to slide the. Oh no, go for. Oh. Now we have to log in again. I want you to go to the content home. Here we are. Okay? We're logged in already. Okay, so let's get my little picture out of there. So we can, we can now look at the subject list. Okay. We have our volunteer here, select the subject. We're gonna to go to animal science and maybe Michelle will help us figure out a, it says select journal animal health research reviews or journal of interest. So first we would want to display more than 25, right? We're gonna display all, I don't know if, I think we have to go with the full 990. Okay, so now we have them all displayed. So let's go down and between you two pick a journal. We could pick this animal health brief search review or there were some African journals. Should we look at that? Yes. Let's go back and pick one of them. Journal of Ecology, is that good? Okay. So then the next question will be, we vote, we're going to open a journal, assuming it works right. Okay. And then we're gonna to go to the most recent volume and see it says there you have full access. I think it'll work right. This is slow. Go to, there we are. Okay, and then we don't want the editorial scroll down and we'll pick, oh, the first one, look. okay. This one? No, 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 you pick. <laughs> I'm just a technician here. Uh, Jim and I are the technicians. Uh, the characterization of animals. We can click on full text, which is yeah. Okay. Nice. 
Okay, so you see it's very similar again, but some of you who are not, we're not getting into keyword searching yet, but some of you who have a discipline could say, okay, let me see which journals I can read on a regular basis. Let me, uh, and let me tell my colleagues, I have, there are two people in the next office who are involved with fisheries, okay? So, all right, so there's one, French. yeah, let's see what happens in French if it's just the abstract, because we know we have some Francophone countries. Ah, uh, just the abstract is in French. Uh, for those of you who are from Francophone countries, this is a problem because as we know, 90% uh, of the material is in English. Yeah, in Cambodia, this is a problem. You have a couple other, Niger, Niger mm -hmm. is one of the countries, yeah, okay. But if you're a student from one of these countries and you're studying here, we yeah, hope correct. that your English is okay. Yeah, right. Someone in the chat said just yes. the abstract. Is yes, okay. just the abstract in French. Okay, so let's go scroll. If we can move that bar, we can do this a little more efficiently. Yeah, so I can't see. Okay, just go up to the top. When, that, when in doubt, click on content home. Aha, that's useful, right? Okay, now we're gonna look at, I think the next slide will show us. Wanna go to the next slide, Jim? Okay. We'll have one more exercise and then Michelle will talk about. Oh, our time's good, huh? Yeah, okay. So there's an option where you can select by language. Uh, so we are going to display French, French journals because it is relevant, especially in the Francophone countries. Okay, next slide. And you get a list. Now this list is really weird in a sense. It says there are 290 journals in French, but what you have is you have all these journals who that are hybrids, right? And they have, half of it's in French and half of it's in English. So it's hit or miss. Okay, now we're going to next slide. I just wanted to demonstrate, show you that. We are now on the publisher list, and this is really useful, okay? I have this global password. You have full access to, and it's going to list every publisher that participates. But let's say you're from a country where the publisher doesn't grant access. So we go to the next slide. Uh, okay. Oh, we, I'm sorry, we went to a publisher. We chose Cabby Publishing Books. And you can see there are no journals, but Cabby has made 107 books available. And the books work just the same as the journals. You can go to a, uh, a full text book and download a chapter, very similar to downloading the journal articles. So this is a success where if you have access to Cabby, you now have 107 journals. Uh, look, is that one relevant? Biology of breeding poultry, biology of mosquitoes. Uh, some will be very relevant to your environment. I don't know if there's a live, straight up livestock one listed yet. We would have to look at the whole list. Okay, so here we have, a, displayed Cabby Publishers books from that A to Z list of you have access to publishers. Next slide. Now, we've gone to, we're in Grenada, which is a country in the Caribbean. And we have looked at the browse journal list. We have scrolled down and there it says, you do not have full access to. Okay, and there are, see, Cabby Book Publishers is not available in this country. John Wiley, which has a lot of journals and books, is not available. Springer Nature, which really is more health, is not available. Okay, if you go to any of these publishers, click to the next one. If you went to one of these publishers, Cabby Publishing Books, you have no journal, you know, books listed under access content. If you click, see, it still says it 107 books. If you click on all items, next slide, 
you see the gray question mark, which means no access, okay? So this publisher list is very useful to see which publishers you get, which ones grant access, which ones do not. Fortunately, when you search in this summon search tool, you can go by country in most cases. So you only have listed the journals you have and the books you have access in the search results, theoretically, correct? Okay, so now we have another exercise. Let's flip over. We're going to go to publisher on the right and click. So you didn't know you'd have an interactive part today, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll put you to work. Okay, so we want to go to Bioline International. Why is it not listed? It was listed last week. Uh oh, we have a crisis. With <laughs> it. We have a crisis with the. Uh, let's try Bio One. Let's see what happens there. Okay, we'll, we'll use this. Uh, that means I have to change the exercise, mm -hmm. which I can do <laughs> for the webinar. Okay, so this one did not work correctly, but we opened up another journal, another publisher. Okay, and you can see all the agriculture, uh, it's really fisheries, it's really broader than just agriculture, uh, plant science journals. Okay, let us go back to the list of publishers. Select a list. Would you want to pick one that you think has some, would have a good mix of agriculture journals? Michelle's the subject expert. Well, we could cheat and we could open the directory of open access journals. Okay. And that'll have a broad listing of uh, publisher of, yeah. of journals and books. Let's try again. Okay, this will, if we go to direct directory. directory. Yeah, this is gonna give you a huge list. You see, under the directory of open access journals as a publisher, there are 6,000 different journals, okay? And some of them you'll see are from very minor publishers. Some of them see even seem to be from different disciplines. But you can see that there are 6,000 journals that go through this directory of open access journal portal, which Agora is linked to. Okay, uh, do we want to open one of the publishers, one of the one of the journals, so let's see, Journal of Science and Technology, Journal, uh, they're all over the map here. That's the problem. Okay, they're not just restricted. Let's, you have any suggestions here? Okay, well, let's display more than 25. And we'll, yeah, either way, it'll take a little while. It's fast here. We have a lot of fast bandwidth here. <laughs> okay, so let's go to add, see if there are any journals from the directory of open access that are use agriculture as a title. Okay, you know what you could do? Hit control F. Where's agriculture? We have a question. Okay. Agriculture. Okay. Oh, agri okay. So now we can pick. Says new. Mm -hmm. Agriculture and food security. Yeah. You want to open that one? Sure. Oh, down. Okay. Notice if it's a new journal that's listed. What is interesting, and I should point this out, some of the journals from the publishers that do not grant access are open access journals. So you still get them. Okay. BMC is part of Springer. Springer does not grant access to all these countries, but this is an open access journal they have. Why do we include these journals in Research for Life program? I will answer that question. Uh, 
what we're trying to do is give people access to literature in their discipline. It doesn't matter if it's from a commercial publisher or from uh, an open access publisher that is registered with the directory of open access journals. One of the criteria for acceptance in Research for Life is that you actually have passed the criteria to be listed as a directory of open access journal. So therefore we use that portal to give access to more material than just strictly what a publisher says yes or no to, the publisher partners. Notice I was saying some of the journals are from publishers who may not grant access in countries, but they're open access journals. They have a mix, some they have, you have to pay a subscription for and some the authors pay and therefore it's open access. Does that help you? We just, our goal is to have people get access to current literature, research literature. If you're in the sum and searching tool, which we'll talk about very soon, you want to be able to search all the journals that potentially would have relevant articles in your country. So it doesn't matter to us if it's open access, if it's directory of open access journals, or if it's a commercial publisher. I hope that answers the question. Any comments from? No, okay. So again, we are looking up a publisher. We went to a journal through the publisher list and we have opened up uh, the actual sub publisher because we went through the directory of open access journals. I think we're done with this unless there are any questions on it. Uh, I think very soon we turn it over to Michelle, who really does the next two webinars much more than I have done, and we'll get into all kinds of useful topics for you. Okay, so now we click on that. I just want to mention there are some other tools that you can get through Agora, and first we'll look at the databases for discoveries list, and then the reference sources list. Okay, so we can see here that in some countries, Scopus is available. I'd also, Michelle, you may talk more about Scholar. If you go to Google Scholar through Agora, there will be more links to the full text, okay? When you're in Google Scholar, just in Google, you often set, get to a journal full text and it says pay $35. Some of those will be linked through Agora. So your Google Scholar searches will change. And the other one that's really interesting is Scopus, which is a very broad uh, database search tool, which is beyond just the journals that are in Agora. So you might also find uh, links to papers, to reports, to pre-publications that would be useful. Just to note, we are going to spend some time on databases to search literature on the internet, but that comes later on. Okay, so as I mentioned, here's Google Scholar, and it's useful to do it through Hanari. Well, it says Hanari login research for life as uh, through Agora. It's just the password I use because then it'll give you a link to full text. Okay, more links to full text. And here's Scopus, which is available in some of the countries if Elsevier has granted access. And that's the uh, search page. Last but not least, for me, there is a reference sources list. And some of these reference sources may be of use in agriculture, such as the agriculture and environmental statistics. So I'm just saying to you, when you get involved with Agora, it is worth looking at the reference sources list and the databases for discoveries list because there will be some useful tools. I think we now go back to the title page. What is Summon? Michelle's up. So Lenny has done an excellent job providing you with the resources on how to identify journal titles and publishers. But 
we want to get into the meat of the matter now and start talking about how to find articles or book chapters within the, the journals or books. And to do that, you have to have a search strategy. So today I'm just briefly going to set up for our next session on in-depth searching and how to get the relevant articles you need for your research. And we will be using Summon. So Summon is a Google-like search engine. It has one box and it provides relevancy ranked results. So the more you add search terms, the fewer the articles, but more on target with what you want to research. We will also go over how to identify the search terms and look at the advanced search options from the results page. Within Summon, you can refine your search results by criteria such as subject, academic journals, date. So the more you, what we call, drill down into a, a specific topic, the, the more targeted your articles will become. You can view the results. You can link directly into the full text. And we will also be showing you how to save your citations in a citation manager in a few sessions from now. So it all comes together nicely. You identify your search topic. You identify the sum and search. You import your citations. And then you can write your paper. It's all in one. Did you have a question? No. OK. It's Okay, so this is the example of the summon search and Lenny has put in a search topic of the, the food security and drought. So when you get to this, you can search this way, but you are going to be retrieving a lot of articles and you'll be retrieving articles on food, on security, on food security and drought. You can, if you want, uh, and we do recommend it, country specific search because that allows you the access within your country. Did I say that right? Yeah. So. What you actually get access to the full text. It will eliminate the publishers that do not grant access. Right. So if you it, want a broader search, you do it in that box. Right. And um, to do that, you can click the specific country search ahead of time, identify the country, where you are located or where you um, will get all that access for. And then it, like Lenny said, it throws out everything that you don't have access to. So because we know that can be very frustrating to want an article only to realize you don't have access. So it, it's good to do the specific country search, identify your location and then start your searching. If your country is not listed, uh, you can do the general search. Or, or from that initial page. Or from that initial page. Yeah, content page. So here we came up with just a generic search strategy, high protein forage and dairy production and developing countries. And this would be used, say, if you didn't have a specific country, you just wanted to broaden your search to any of the developing countries. With this strategy, this is not something I would recommend because it is going to search all of the words, either separately or as a phrase. But when you do do that search, what you can see is the search return article. So 13,000 is, is a little much. Nobody wants to go through 13,000 <laughs> articles um, or book chapters, et cetera. But you can see on the left-hand side, refining your search. You can refine it to a journal article, which is still 12,000, way too much. Book chapter, ebook, book review, conference proceeding. Next week, we will go over the different types of journal articles, the peer review, original research versus um, review articles, just so we're all on the same page on how to find those types of articles you need. You can limit it by publication date and even down by discipline. So the more, again, the more limits you have, the fewer the articles, but the more targeted your search. So, um, I have a few slides out of order and I apologize, but Jim, if you could uh, flip just to the, in three slides. 
Yeah, Here right you know. here. Sure. Thank okay. you. So what I wanted to say, so we had that original search and sum in the high protein forage. But here, so how do you organize your search into, into phrases? And within Summon, you do that through quotes. So here we have high protein forage and quote dairy production and quote and developing countries. So you can see it's um, 1100 articles, which is still quite a bit. So even to limit it down more, high protein forage and dairy production and quote unquote developing countries gives you 3,600, which is still really high. <laughs> so, and if you still did not do the quotes on high protein forage, but you did around dairy production in developing countries, you can see how it narrows down to 184. Because what those 184 will give you, anything with the word high, anything with the word protein, anything with the word forage, coupled with dairy production in developing countries. Now, if you put quotes around each phrase and it's not showing up here, the high protein forage in quotes and dairy production in quotes in developing countries in quotes, you only receive, I think, nine articles. So that may be a little too limited. So you need to restructure your search. So I just wanted to, to point that out, that um, how you, come up with your search terms, your search strategies, and combine it with the Boolean searching, uh, you get very different results. And in a few weeks, our next seminar, we will definitely go over how to maximize your search strategies. Um, so yeah, you can go back to that. And then I'll put up. Yes, so I invite you um, until October 10th, please email me, do some completed searches, Send me your search strategies, what worked, what didn't, what questions you have, and we will prepare that. And I will go over some maybe restructured searches if you have questions. And then that way, this will be relevant to you conducting your own research. So we can start out with, go ahead and identify some journal articles, limit it to scope, what worked, what didn't, and we will go ahead, uh, email me, and I will go ahead and do a broadcast of maybe some maximized search strategies. Please also include your goal or your research statement so I can help determine the best search strategy for you. And Lenny will go over some of the free internet resources. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions with your Agora registration or you need support, please contact Lenny directly. Yeah. You see, I get to do the overview and Michelle really gets to teach you how to be a effective and efficient searcher and use your time well. So then uh, again, just to reiterate, the next workshop will be on the search strategies for successful literature reviews. Then at the end of October, we will have a strategies on learning how to manage your citations. So once we identify all the citations you want, how to store them, organize them, share them with your colleagues, just the citations, as well as how when you're writing your paper to do in-text citations and create your bibliography. In November, we'll delve into the ethics of research publications. This could include ethics of authorship, acknowledgement, what is peer review, as well as avoiding the plagiarism, falsification and fabrication of data. So stay tuned for that. Do we have any questions? I hope this was of use to you. Uh, it really focused on this one tool and now next time we'll talk about how to search within that tool and also broader, broader uh, stra strategies that can be used elsewhere in just in general searching. Correct? That is correct. So again, uh, my email is uh, in this PowerPoint presentation. So again, um, I'm looking forward to seeing your search strategies and questions you may have. And so we'll, thank you for logging in this morning. So we'll leave a couple more minutes for questions. So please go ahead and uh, type in your question here. Um, but let me go ahead and ask you one question. How am I going to get access to Agora if my institution is not already registered? 
I would say first contact me because for the five countries that participate in this program, I have a list of registered institutions. So I can double check that. And then we'll go through the process to get your institution registered. For some of you who are say studying here for several years, these issues may not come up until you return to your institution, but we can at least confirm that your institution is registered and give you the list of the contacts and you could send it to a colleague and say, hey, make sure this is all working right. Uh, when I do face-to-face -face workshops, there are always problems with usernames and passwords. So people uh, have left the institution, other issues. So we'd be happy to work with you to see what's going on in your institution and get you registered. Just send me an email and we'll start the process. For students, for faculty who are going to uh, Agora eligible countries, communicate with me. We'll see what's going on with that institution. We'll give you, again, uh, leads on who should have the username and password. If you go to the Agora, if you go to the original Agora FAO URL, down at the bottom, it'll give you a list of eligible countries. But again, if you're not sure, just communicate with me. All right, and just to emphasize, this is your email address right here. Oh, wow. It's ryanl at ufl.edu. Oh, I, I like, uh, what country? Can you tell us what country you're from? We have a, a question from Alcalde. It says, I've been using Agora, including Scopus, for the last five years, but not aware of Summon. Could you tell us a little bit more about Summon? I think they're almost competing products, but it is just another way to conduct your search. So I think um, learning about Summon will help broaden your, your research. And the, when you search, if you do a comparative search between Scopus and Summon, you will find different relevancy rankings. The, there may be some overlap with the same subject that you type, but you'll definitely find different articles. And isn't Scopus broader than uh, Agora? Correct. Scopus includes all sciences. Yeah. And that's why you see the difference in relevancy rankings and there may be some overlap, but um, same search criteria, different, different articles you will retrieve. Maybe in the next couple of weeks, you can do some searches and then give us a little update on what you, if you found that using someone, which is again, country specific was useful or not. That would be very interesting. So please send us a little email or when we come on next time, you can go into chat and give us an update. We appreciate it. Yeah, we love the feedback. Yes, especially since we don't have that face-to-face -face situation. So we have time for one more question. If uh, there's anything else from our listeners, um, we have a response here that uh, yes, he's saying he will do that. <laughs> so excellent work. And, and everyone, of course, is being asked that by October 10th next week to send your search strategies to Michelle. And here is her email address right here. So make sure that you complete that assignment. You can go ahead and do that today. You don't have to wait until next week. Um, but by next week, she'll compile them together and prepare for the next webinar, which is in two weeks from today webinar three on the 17th of October. And you can register now by going to our website here under the events section, and you'll see the link to register for that webinar. So I want to go ahead and wrap things up now and say uh, thank you to Kelsey, our intern <laughs> who helped to do the search live here on the air. This is a first for us. And of course, to Lenny and Michelle for being with us uh, live in person. We are uh, live on Facebook, so we have an audience there as well as here on Zoom. And we will make this recording available on our website. So tell your friends who were not able to participate live that there will be a recording. It will be uh, also on this website at the same URL here uh, shortly. 
So with that, um, I just want to conclude and say this has been the second uh, webinar of this series of five. And in two weeks, we hope to see you again here to join us for the next webinar. And happy searching. All right. Thank you. Thank you.